Holy, please. You stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar. You stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another righteous altar that speaks consistent with God's desire for you. You stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar. Now, look up please. Today, altars for us is not to rebuild stones and physical monuments. Are we together? Yes. Altar for the believer today in Christ. Listen carefully, there is a big difference. When Abraham, Isaac and Jacob spoke of altars, they meant physical monuments with animals upon them, sacrifices as demanded by God. But today we don't do all of those things. Unfortunately, and I say this with all due respect, I hear that there are many believers or pseudo-Christian sects that are still involved in building physical monuments. With all due respect, it's not mine to condemn anybody, but consistent with the word of God, those things have been abolished. The idea of altars for the believer now is not rebuilding physical things, like putting a stone behind your house. Now, I know that most of us have, for instance, what you call your prayer altar. And what you mean is a room or a place you have dedicated unto God. That is fine, provided you don't idolize the place. Are we together now? Yes, if it's a place for convenience, dedicated between you and God to spend time, that is fine. But where you now idolize it and it looks like you cannot meet God any other place and you create a ritual out of it, it now becomes destructive. Are we together now? Because worship today for us in Christ is not just in a place, it is a state, a spiritual state beyond a place you can be in church and yet you are not in church because you are not really there are we together jesus said a time will come you will neither worship on this mountain or come here or do this and that but that the father is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth so god is more concerned about a state beyond a place you can be in the right place but not in the with the right heart when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were gathered in one accord. They were in one place, but they were in one accord. Their accord was greater than the place. The Holy Ghost did not come because the name of the place was Upper Room. It was the state. There was a state of unity and expectation and faith that allowed the Holy Spirit to come. Are we together now? So there's nothing wrong in having a place dedicated in your home, your office, and so on and so forth, provided you do not build monuments out of it. But now, I'm teaching you that there is a system. When the believer talks of altars, you are talking of speakings and programmings. Listen carefully. Speakings and programmings. Speakings and programmings. Not physical objects. So when I say... I have an altar. That means that your speakings and your programmings, are we together? They have become consistent enough to create instructions in the realm of the spirit that are pro-destiny, pro-kingdom. Are we together now? Yes. If you tell me you have an altar, meaning you build some stones, it doesn't matter where you brought the stones from. Are we together? There are so many things in my house. I have a simulation of the Ark of Covenant. It was given to me as a gift. So you see the Ark of Covenant. I don't worship it. It's just there to remind me that we have come a long way walking with God. Are we together now? If I'm eating bread and it falls on the Ark, I'll carry it and keep eating it. I'm not going to throw it away because it fell on uh, my Ark of Covenant. No, are you getting the point now? So it's beautiful. I like to see it. You know, it reminds me just, I have all these things around my house, eagles representing this, lion representing this, but you don't worship it. The challenge is when you now build a monument and now come and stand kneeling down in front of it, ah, you have gotten into idolatry. You are worshiping an unknown God. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because there have been all kinds of teachings about altars. And so that you do not generalize, there is a unique thought that we are trying to establish here. That altar for a believer now is not just about physical monuments. 
even though truly the altars you may be cons considering wanting to tear down may have physical expressions with priesthood managing it but that you do not counter that altar by building another physical monument there is a more superior way of approaching it and this is what i want to show you now pray in the spirit in one minute and ask the lord to open your eyes in the name of jesus christ we look to yahweh yahweh our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Are you praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah right how to tear down altars and how to rebuild altars of righteousness we've established so far that with respect to the outcomes that these altars produce in the life of individuals and families we have demonic or evil altars we have godly or righteous altars altars being platforms being tables of negotiations hallelujah so when you say i have an altar it means you have created a platform and that the platform is created for the believer through words. Don't forget, altars are built through words, largely, principally through speakings. Altars are built through words, not just physical monuments. Now, there are actions of obedience, and I'll come there, but the principal way that believers build altars is through speakings. Now, there is a law in the spirit I want to introduce to you now. This law was honored even by Jesus. It's called the law of substitution. The law of substitution. That means that there can never be a void at any given time. When there's no darkness, there is light. There can never be a time where there is neither darkness or light. If it's not morning, it's night. Are we together? Are we together now? Yes. The law of substitution. So, the law of substitution says that with respect to this now, watch this now, that you cannot stop outcomes by stopping them. You stop outcomes by replacing what should be. Are we together now? It's, it's, you are substituting evil for good, not stopping the entire process. The concept of altars was so designed that at no point in your life should there be any void. That means if there is no personal altar set up by you, the altar before becomes your status quo. Are you getting the point now? You don't have